of every believer get ready to rise up in this room. I need every worshiper to lift your hands all over this room. If you know that God's healing is here, that breakthrough is here, that deliverance is here, I need you to open up your mouth and give God glory. Let's raise it up and say, Come on! up from your belly and say, Whoa! One more time, let's raise it up, everybody. We say, your hands before the Father. Sometimes it could be a challenge to figure out. I know mentally that I need God, but I pinpoint is it that I need God for. In the past, now close to 17, 18 hours, God gave us a reminder what we needed. Many of you that are here in the sanctuary this morning, many of you that are watching us live, you were out there at the mall. You were out there shopping, preparing for your kids or for yourself to go back to school or to prepare for the end of the, the last part of the year you went out shopping you went out do about your personal business yeah and god spared you that it was you that received those bullets yes sir god spared you that you were not the one sitting at the at the bar enjoying the night and then some person walks in and shoot Jesus. so if any of us have any doubt or struggling to figure out why do i need god I know I need God, but I don't know why everything is fine in my life. It is the grace of God that you are here this morning. Yes, Lord. It is the grace of God that you are standing, that you can hear my voice, that your eyes can open and see me, that you can raise your hand, you don't have struggle with your mind. By the grace of God that you are here, you don't need to go through a circumstance to realize that you need Him. God is not only the creator but the sustainer of our life so as we're going to sing that song once again if you can find it within your heart to have the gratitude to say to God thank you that I need you and that you already answer my needs before I can even realize that I need you you are already there I don't know if it's for everybody but there are some people in this sanctuary right now to whom you got to open your spirit we need you and let your soul testify. We need you now. We need you now. Alpha 
and Omega. We need you now, Alpha and Omega. You reign on high. You reign on high. You reign on high. You reign on high. That's what you did. You died for me. Alpha and Omega. You died for me. Alpha and Omega. That's what you did, Lord. You died for me. And the greatest part of the, your testimony, Lord, is that three days later, you arise. You're not dead, but you are alive. You did it, Lord God. Not because we deserve it. Not because, Lord, we have any background that is positive. But despite who we are, you did it anyways. And so, Father, as we are gathered around this table and prepare our hearts and our minds to engage in worshiping you lord god with the holy communion father god and while we are reminiscent lord of what you have done lord at the cross laying your blood father god shedding your blood lord god for our sins who are we oh god to deserve such mercy god who are we oh god to reserve to receive such grace father god it is because of your love and so father i pray that you will forgive us of all sins and iniquities that we have committed that you will cleanse us in the blood of the lamb as father as we engage lord god to take that represents your flesh and drinking the wine that represents your blood father god let it be lord that we don't it, don't do it out of routine or out of a bad heart lord god but we do it with sincerity with expectation that we will meet you one day in jesus name
tells us that in the moment of the Last Supper, Jesus took first the bread and he gave praise unto the Then he told his disciple, this bread represents my body that is given unto you. Let us eat. taking the supper. The Bible tells us that Jesus took the wine out of the cup. He gave praise unto the Father. He looked at his disciples once more and he told them that this wine represents the covenant that the Father has with you through my blood. So that every time you eat the bread and you drink the wine, you shall remember the sacrifice that I am doing for you until I return. And with expectation of Jesus' return, let us drink the wine. Oh, how you save me. Oh, how you save me. Oh, Come on, let's raise that up together. Say, you save me. your prayer I encourage you to give God the glory right now give the very best of your praise to the Lord right now if you have experienced the salvation there is in Christ give him the praise that he deserves everyone to the kingdom welcome everyone to the kingdom church my name is pastor David P. I'm the campus pastor of our Creole campus in a few minutes we're going to welcome our guests but just before that I want to draw your attention to the screen as we have our morning announcements enjoy
It's not too late. Join Pastor David and the TKC family on the 2019 Royal Caribbean Cruise. All are welcomed, you, your family, and your friends. Selling dates are December 14th through December 19th, 2019. Call 1-800-465-3595. Give group number 505-4734. Ask for any available promotional rates. See the table in the lobby for handouts with all required information. Happy sailing! Hey ladies, it's that time again for our annual tea party with a twist. You don't want to miss it this year. Come and fellowship. There's going to be free food, prizes, and much more. And don't forget to dress to impress. Meet us on August 31st at 9.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. To register, text the word T to 407-449-8884. Thank you so much for tuning in to our announcement. But you know what? On the real, you might come as you are, but you won't stay as you are. With that being said, put your hands together for our announcements. Short and sweet. It is customary here at the Kingdom Church that we welcome everyone and particularly our first time guests. So if that is you here this morning, that you are here worshiping with us for the very first time, we kindly ask you to please raise your hands to go. We can acknowledge your presence. I see two hands in the back, a few more hands in the front, the side, amen. Family, we could do better than that for our guests. We're sincerely happy and we are grateful to make a way for you to be here with us this morning. We know that accident but it is ordained by God. And so after the service, we have a table just for you. Our hugs ministry will welcome you there and we have a special gift just. So let's put our hands together once again for our first time guests. And as we know, um, here at the Kingdom Church, we are a family. And we don't just communicate with our words, but we communicate with our actions as well. And so, this moment, I will kindly ask you to please stand. For some of you, it's been a while that you haven't been at church because the whole month of July, you were off. And we ask you to find five people. Five because five represents the number of grace. Find yourself five people and tell them, welcome home. Welcome home. You know you had a great vacation and time off if you had to take a three-week cleanse before you went back to your regular routine. Three weeks just eating vegetables and water. But I'm good. I feel great. But you know I had a great vacation and I'm, I'm just so happy to be back. I'm happy to see your wonderful faces. I just want to remind you a few things before I pass it on to my husband. Don't forget August 31st, ladies, let me hear you make some noise. August 31st, we're doing a tea party with a little twist at 9.30 in the fellowship hall. If you haven't registered, please go ahead and do that now so that we can have an accurate amount or count so that we can make sure we prepare for you. 
Amen? And then as you know, this is just a season and just a time on this world where more and more people pray less, right? And as you know, this is the time, like the song couldn't be any better where we really do need to pray a lot more. And as school's opening up, as me, I'm a teacher myself, I already started last week getting ready for the kids to come in. It is very vital as parents, if you are a parent, that you set that bar in your house where you make it a habit to pray daily with your children. When you wake up in the morning, pray together as a family with your children. Before you go to bed at night, pray as a family with your children. You know, school's doors about to open and we know the enemy's at work. The enemy's really at work, but we serve a more powerful God, a God that really truly does care for us, but we really need to not play around with prayer and be serious with it. Pray for your children's teachers, pray for their coaches, pray for each and every person that's going to interact with your child because they're at school more hours than they're at home. So you really do have to pray for them and cover them and anoint them with oil because if you don't do it, who will? So as school's about to open up, I just want to remind you guys that it's very important not only to pray for your children, but be involved. Go to parent meetings. Do homework with your children. If they got it, good, check it anyways. Let them know that you care about their academics. You care about them spiritually and academically. Amen? It's so great to be back. Ladies, August 31st, what time? Amen. Well, we are so, um, ex thank you, Don, for the monitors. I just realized that when you go away for four weeks, um, or actually it's been six, that they get the monitors for you, and I appreciate that, Don, so much. Um, just want to make mention to you that uh, yesterday we had an amazing opportunity to um, share love to our community by doing back-to-school uh, backpacks. We have some extra ones for those who may need it. Don't be ashamed. It is our gesture of love to you. Uh, one of the most interesting stories that I found and heard uh, as they were sending me updates on how it was, um, was the uh, Holden Heights campus. Uh, they were walking up and uh, greeting people as they were going down different parts of the Orange Blossom Trail. And they met the owner of um, Cleo's and Rachel. Um, the owner was there. Uh, interesting. Um, he brought a whole host of kids when he found out we were doing a back to school giveaway. He brought a whole host of kids to the church to receive school supplies. And he was so moved by what he saw, he also gave an offering. We received it, <laughs> sanctified it, prayed over it. Use it for the glory of God. You know, one of the conversations that he said that I thought was so profound and poignant was he said that, you know, a lot of these children that he inter interacts with, they call him uncle because they don't have any fathers. And he said very, very poignantly that what, what these young men need is, is fathers to step in the gap. And I thought that was so profound that from his purview, that that's what he observed is a necessary factor for the evolution of our children. And I think it's so important that we do all that we can do to step in and be a part of the process of changing lives, uh, whether it's just one life at a time, one heart at a time. So also, y'all, I need your help. This Wednesday, I've been gone. I didn't realize that this Wednesday is the first Wednesday of the month. And first Wednesday, we have Bishop C.E. Glover, who we've been trying to get for over a year. He is a preaching phenomenon. He is uh, respected all around the country. He teaches in universities. He preaches all over. 
and we've been trying to get him for uh, about a year and finally able to get him to come and it's when I caught when he called and uh, called our office and said hey have pastor give me a call I realized oh snap that's this Wednesday because I have been gone so I need your assistance this Wednesday I know you've been off for an entire month so you should be ready to be back in the house of God on this Wednesday and it would be a utter disaster if I utter disaster uh, I would go on another six-week vacation but I'd be in a mental institution <laughs> if if C.E. Glover were to come and we weren't present. So do me a favor, look at your neighbor. The only time you're going to look at him today and say, look here, neighbor. Talk to him. Say, look here, neighbor. You've been missing for a while. I know it. But our pastor needs you this Wednesday. So make the sacrifice, please. We'll be here this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, y'all. 7 o'clock. Bring somebody with you. Um, man, he's an amazing gift, and I was so honored that he was coming and just so glad that we were able to uh, facilitate uh, his coming to us, and that's it's a big deal. And I want to let you know he's coming from Fort Lauderdale area. And just to give you context, when a speaker accepts an invitation to a church, and doesn't have to, it's not that they're coming because they're bored, okay? It's, they're not coming because they ain't got nothing to do at their house. They're, they're, they're either coming, one, because they respect the relationship that you have with them, or they respect the organization that you have. And so if he's making that journey to come up from South Florida for three and a half hours, let's be present to hear what God has to say for 30 minutes. Somebody say amen. Man, that's a pretty fair exchange. All right, so I want to start this series off um, um, leaders of course we're meeting tomorrow at 7 o'clock but and then elders ministers pastors at 6 30 I want to start this off by teaching this new series called classes in session and if you I think I want to also acknowledge the amazing work the praise team did I'm being sensitive to the uh, events of this weekend and singing songs that are appropriate for this particular time and I want to give you guys wonderful accolades for that as well as the band as well. Uh, happy birthday to our own Jamichael whose birthday was uh, yesterday and we celebrate him on the organ. He's up over there. It was your birthday yesterday, right? Okay, good. Praise God. Just want to make sure. All right, so let's go to Jonah chapter number three, y'all. Jonah chapter number three. Jonah chapter number three and and Jonah is um, is a uh, is an interesting book it's short but it's it's filled with amazing um, features that describe God's eternal plan for the local church and you may not see it immediately when you look at and you might say like how is this like God's eternal plan for the local church but it's it's in there in Jonah chapter number three Jonah is an interesting representation of the local church in that it represents Israel and it represents Jonah represents a type of Israel who feel that the gospel that they have is is not it's not worth giving to anybody else they feel like we're God's people, so, so why do we have to waste our time sharing the gospel with people who are less than us? And a, a lot of us kind of feel that way in such a way. It, it's, it's, it's an attitude of entitlement. It's an attitude that's been pervasive long before uh, we felt it in our culture. It's, it's an attitude of entitlement. It's really dangerous because entitlement runs through every aspect of your life. Some people feel entitled to a raise. Some people feel you're, you're really not entitled to a raise. It's good that your job recognize the work that, but you're not entitled to it. Some, we're, we're entitled to, I, I deserve a scholarship. We, I'm, I'm entitled 
for love. And that's, that's not always true. Like entitlement makes you feel like you've been robbed of something you really don't really have the rights to. Entitlement is a dangerous thing. It makes the assumption that you have to greet me first because it's, it's this entitlement mentality. And entitlement is a very dangerous thing because it makes you feel like, no, I deserve to be recognized because entitlement is a dangerous, it's a dangerous thing. In Jonah chapter number three, I'm going to read all 10 verses, believe it or not, because I want you to get the context. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time go to the great great city of Nineveh that's kind of interesting you call it a great city and it's filled with crime it's filled with chaos it's filled with decadence but God calls it great okay let me pause because y'all missed it it's he it's it's the worst city in the world like nobody wants to go to Nineveh it's so bad nobody wants to go to everybody like yo you want to go to LA yeah let's do it you want to go to Vegas let's do it and then that one hood area you want to go to, eh, maybe maybe not you know it's kind of the area where it's like hey girl I'll come pick you up where you at oh I'm over at such and such oh okay well I'll send you an Uber to go get you so this is what this is what it is but God calls it great because here's what you and I need to understand God doesn't speak to where we are. He speaks to where he sees us. God, God doesn't, one of the greater challenges of becoming a believer is that God never talks to your starting place. He talks to your ending place. And if you get caught up in God speaking to your start, most of you have disqualified yourself from doing anything that God has called you to do because you look at your start and you don't recognize that the omniscient God is not speaking to your start. He's speaking to your ending. That's why he's able to say, you are a great people. You are a wise. God, God, who, me? No, you are it. And if you live your life based on where you are you'll never do what you're supposed to do because you'll live out of the purview of where you are here's the thing every call of God will reflect your insecurity because every call of God will always be bigger than who you are where you are and what you have and God does that intentionally so that you and I don't feel like I got this on my own. If there isn't a level of fear in what you do, if there isn't a level of your hands sweating at what you got, maybe you stopped walking in faith and started walking in your own authority. Right? So now here it is. So he says this. He says, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it, like kind of like a Texas. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Ninevites, the Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. Now remember, Jonah at the beginning didn't want to go. God gives him the word that he needs to go, and now he's operating in the gift that he once did not want to do. So, so God is merciful that even when we say no, he will wait on us to get our yes together. Sometimes God will move on if our yes won't come. But there are a lot of times that God has given us a redo. So here, when Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat down in the desk. This is the proclamation issued by the decree of the king and his nobles. Do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat, drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let every call urgently, let everyone call urgently on God. <clears throat> so like you see this, this mass shooting that has happened and then we'll, we'll see this uh, redundant, hey, let's, we're, we're praying. The question, really, the thing is, is that a lot of people who are posting their praying are not really praying. And the people who say we're praying, it is a politically correct thing that we say. So we oftentimes um, have empty religion. And because we use empty words that we really don't believe, it's just kind of like someone passes away and you say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you. Like, how long did you really pray? 
You understand know what I'm saying? It's, it's a formality. It's these people, when they heard the word of the Lord, they, they broke into sackcloth, which is like wearing all black. And they just, they, just, they just wanted to show like they felt so bad at the word of the Lord. But here's the thing. We don't really believe God's prophets like we used to. So when God speaks, we always got to give God a rebuttal on why it is the way it is. Like, God, I know, like, I know, like, okay, yeah, I heard you tell me that, but let me let you know why I did it this way. No, I, I, God, I know what you said, but let me help you understand. No, when God speaks, it should be, so, so I said this morning, I said, some of us talk to God like he's our son. Because entitlement makes you pray uniquely too. Entitlement makes you feel like, God, you owe me something. Like, God, I, I command you right now, God, to do. Hold on. God's like, wait a minute. Who, who are you commanding? You, you nobody. You, you don't have the authority to command me. I command the seas. I command you. Entitlement will slip into your prayer life. Entitlement will slip into your worship life where you will only sing songs that are pleasing to you. And so here's what happens. He says, he proclaims a fast when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways. He relented and did not bring any destruction that he had threatened. Now, there's a definition I want you to know. It's, it's called the providence of God. The providence of God simply means this. It means it's God's protective care of his children the protective care of God or the nature as a spiritual power, but it's the protective care of God for his children. The providence of God speaks of God's protective care for his children. The protective care that God is daily, hourly, every second of the day, figuring out how to make things work to protect you, not just from external things, because the world is inherently evil. God, hear me, God is, you, you can't have both. You can't say, I want God to control everything. And then you say, I want my own freedom. You, you can't have both. So, so God in his infinite wisdom, God can take evil and work it for good. He doesn't always stop all evil because if he stopped all evil, then we'll all be robots. We'd all worship him because he's forcing us to. But he can use casualties, he can use destruction as means to get a message. Now, now here's the thing, for us who want to make the earth heaven, you're going to have a problem. Because this will never be it. This will be, this will be, this, this, this tragedy will be politicized. This, while people are burying their children, this, this tragedy will be used as scoring points. So, so you got to understand, we live in a cruel world that doesn't necessarily care about your trauma. They, they say they do, yeah, we're believing God for you, but we use it as political scores because in the reality of things, they know the world is still going to continue on tomorrow and in 72 hours, there's another news cycle and then we move on to the next thing and then we become desensitized to the fact that people are losing their lives. It is just like us. You could get so caught up in what you do day to day that you become desensitized to people even going to hell like have you ever walked around somewhere and said man there's a lot of people going to hell like you're not judging them you kind of are but you're just like if all these people act the way they do without knowing their salvation just just by personal observation they're all going to hell and most of us really don't care let's be honest how many times have you ever walked outside saw a crowd of people and stopped them and said brother I just want to ask you are you saved because I looked at you and tell that you're going to bust hell wide open what? What? You, you know what I'm saying don't say that because you might get punched in the stomach but, but what I'm saying is the care and concern Look, this is what Jonah had he was so broken for their condition that he was weeping over how they were When's the last time your Christianity brought you to the place where you were weeping over the condition of someone else other than yourself? And we were in New Orleans, and 
<laughs> Elder Jonathan City. And uh, like people were drunk. Like drunk, 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 drunk. But they were having a good time. And, and I'm walking, there was a swingers convention and everything, and it was crazy. I was like, wow, this, this, is, this is lit. My God, everything's going on here, right? It's just, just crazy. They had all the money, all the music playing. On. And I was like, if God came today and all these people were in hell, who would care? Jonah, Jonah, Jonah's like many of us, right? Jonah represents Israel's jealousy of her favorite relationship with God and her unwillingness to share God's love and compassion with the nations. Like, here's the thing. We, we as people oftentimes lose compassion for other people so we don't share what we think is relevant because oftentimes we don't value what we possess ourselves. Like, like when you really think about when, 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 when Betty and Bravis were singing in, 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 in the key of C, B, E, F, G, whatever. So that whatever key they were singing in, and they were singing about, oh, how he saved me. It's kind of like for some of us, like, yeah, he, he saved me, praise God. And I saw this young girl on the ground, and I'm thinking to myself, like, that's the posture that we should have, maybe not physically, but internally when we think about, like, God, out of all the people you could have saved, you saved me. No, 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 no. Now, here's where, here's where theology matters, because a lot of us say this stuff, like, oh, I'm so glad I found the Lord. God was never lost. He found you. He found me. And I'm so glad that he found someone like me. He could have skipped over me. He could have found someone else more deserving but the Lord found me he found he found me, found me. so so here here here's the thing Nineveh represents the enemies of God against Israel so here it is God said this, this is mature Christianity classes in session God said I want you Jonah to go save your enemy. I lost the whole church right there. God said, Jonah, I, I, want, I, want you to, I want you to go save your enemy. The one that's been talking about you. The one that's been rolling their eyes at you. I want you to, no, 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 Jonah, Jonah didn't want to go. Jonah was like, nah, you know, he got caught up in the belly because he's like, bump them, they could all die. I don't care about them. Who, psh, bump them, I'm going to do me. You know what we do. We, we, we find things that, that fit our revelation. Ooh, that preach. I'm so glad God let them walk out my life because he heard them whisper and they, I didn't hear what they said and God exited. And we do all of these things. We find all the social media posts and we share them that fit our flesh. I'm so glad that God made a table in the presence of my enemies. If they only knew what God had on my life, they wouldn't have treated me like they did. And God says, yeah, that's all your flesh. I want to see, do you love me enough to love your enemies like I loved you, who was an enemy to me, and I still made provision? Now listen, y'all, church, it's hard to love your enemies. You ever saw one of your enemies and wanted to pick them up and throw them through a window? Not like that, like, you, you know, right, right, you know. But, but, but God's like, no, I, I want you to have that type of love that you'll love those who you know will never love you. See, a, a lot of us want to be blessed not because we want to glorify God. We want to be blessed to prove people wrong that doubted us. We want to be blessed to prove people wrong that thought we weren't going to make it. We want to prove people wrong that said we would never be anything. And God's like, yeah, I'd really like to help you, but you'll take my gift that I've given you and use it as a weapon of mass destruction. So before I take you to the next level, let me work on humbling you so that when you get to your next level, you don't step on those who are beneath you. But here's three things I want to tell you. So here's what God told Jonah in essence. God speaks to our potential, not our present. He says, the city is great. Like, I don't care what you see, it's a great city. So God oftentimes speaks what he knows is not. Existent. Like, how many times have you ever spoke to your marriage, even if it's in a bad season, like, this is a great marriage. You are a great husband. You are a great wife. You are a great son. You are a great daughter. And you're like, man, I ain't, I ain't finna say that. Well, you get what you say. You have what you say. 
Like maybe you should change your words. Like, yo, you're, you're the best, you're the best husband I ever had. You're the best wife I ever had. You're the best son I ever had. You, 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 you know, you provide, even, you ain't got no job, but you provide for our house. You, 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 <laughs> baby, you, the way you cooked in that kitchen, you just, you just, you just turned my life upside down. Like, you can't even fry noodles. But, but I'm, I'm just speaking those things which, which are there. But the way you left me that $20 on the night saying, I'm so proud of you. I'm just speaking those things. I'm not, I'm not saying it in a shade way. I'm saying it with sincere Like, I believe the best in you. I, I believe that you're going to be greater than what. And sometimes the reason why we're getting what we're getting is because of what we're saying. We got to change what we say so that we can change what we see. I'm not going to go by what. No, this is a great house. It may not be what I want it to be, but it's everything I need it to be. This is the bomb not come. I may be Ubering, but this, this is the will of God for my season right now. But God, I, I, I believe you're going to make a way out of no, because God knows. Like, I'm not talking about blab it, grab it, like, yo, I, I'm not going to go to work today and God's going to pay my bills. Like, like, I'm not going to pay the power bill. Jesus paid it all. I'm good. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about, listen, like just speaking to things that are not. Because, listen, if you're not careful, Satan will convince you to fall in love with the minor details and miss the major ones. I saw how you looked at me today. You didn't, you didn't give me no love. And then you forget 15 years of love. Because you didn't put the toilet seat down? Like, really, we, we arguing about because the toilet seat now done took off to another whole different place. And, you know, your mama's ugly. No, your daddy's ugly. You know, your mama ain't got no hair. Your daddy ain't got no teeth. And now we all dis... Right, because Satan, Satan is, Satan's a master manipulator. And a lot of us don't discern that it's not natural. It's spiritual. Because if I can get you to be bitter at people, you'll close doors that God wants to use people to open. So, so some of you who are, who are in a tight season relationally, like, maybe you need to speak things that are not. Like, you look good in that muumuu. <laughs> girl, you, girl, the way you rocking that bandana with the toothpaste on your nose and on your I, I see a queen I see it I am not I am not going to let what you look like right now determine what I believe right so you need to speak something that's not there so here it is number one Jonah learned three things You don't need to just love God, you need to follow God. Because a lot of people love him, but don't follow. So I, I, gotta, I gotta love God enough to follow God. I gotta love God enough to follow God. No, I gotta love God enough to follow God. Not just love him, because some of us love him, but we never follow. Like, oh man, I, God got my heart, but God told you to go over there. Yeah, but I love him, but I'm just not ready to go. I'm just not ready. No, love me enough to follow me. Don't, don't do this. I'm with you when you're right. No, because no, people who tell you that, that's a problem, number one, because you ain't always going to be right. Okay, so, so God says, no, you, you need to love me and follow me. So go to Nineveh. Because most places that I'm going to call you to go, you're not going to like going. So get used to it. And if every place I call you to go, you enjoy, something's wrong with your hearing. So, so number one, follow God. Number two, love people. No, no that word is used so, so broadly. Like, you ever met somebody who's like, man, I just love you? It just makes me sick when people say that. So how do you, okay, we just met. Like you, you don't know me enough to, let me, let me give you, this, this is not part of my message. You know when people love you? When y'all pissed off at each other and you still come back and be friends. Because a relationship not tested 
is not a relationship. No, no, don't tell me you love me. I want to see how you are when we disagree. I want to see what you're going to do with that disagreement. Are you going to blast me? Are you going to tell everybody that I did this? I want to see how you relate when life is not going good. I, you're not ride or die because we ain't never fought. If we've never fought to where I hung up on you and felt like punching you in the throat, and then all of a sudden I turn back around and say, you know what, I can't do this, man. I'm so sorry. I can't believe it. That's when you know you're good. But don't tell me we're good and we've never been through nothing because because a relationship not tested, it can't be, can't be trusted. No, it can't be trusted. No. I got to know. I, I got to know that you can be trusted. You got to love people. That's a hard thing to do in today's world. It's very difficult. Because so many people have a backstory that we don't have the privilege of getting to know. And so we critique people based upon our perception of their story. And we want everybody, even though we don't say it, we want people to be like us. And when they're not like us, it doesn't make us happy. You got to be able to love people. Love them beyond their shortcomings. That's why I said when people say, well, Doc, I'm with you when you're right. Well, what if I'm wrong? So you're going to be, so if I'm wrong, you're not with, no. You, you got to learn how to love people because people won't always have their best. They won't always be on their best. Nineveh was not the best people to love. They were nasty. They would kill you and watch your blood spill slowly. They were vicious people. It, it, wouldn't it be amazing if Christians could love their baby daddy? It, wouldn't it be amazing if Christians could love their exes? Well, like, help me, Jesus. Jesus, oh, he saved me. Oh, how he saved me. Right? You, because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's extremely different because God will always challenge your love. He will always challenge your love. Have you ever been betrayed by someone you love? Now, here's the difference, y'all. Loving someone. Now, don't, don't misinterpret this. Don't, don't leave service today. And they say, well, how was church? And your husband's beating you up or your wife, wife is beating you up because it goes both ways. It, it does go both ways. It popped you in the mouth. And he said, well, pastor told me to love you anyway. That's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying that love does not make you forget, but it does make you forgive. Now, here's the thing. Forgiveness is not about them. It's about you. See, when I've forgiven you, I don't got to check your page to see what you're doing. Come here, church. I, I, I don't got to look at your page. Have you, ever, have you ever been real nasty? You saw something and you just, see, you just, you didn't even, you liked it in your heart, but you're like, uh, I ain't even going to give them that much credit because if I like it, they'll know I liked it. I ain't even going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I ain't, ain't going to do it. I ain't, ain't even going to do it. Right? Because this is this, but you got to love people. God will always challenge your love walk. And, and really, when God is really testing your love walk, it may be something next on the horizon that he wants to see, can you pass this test? It's hard to love people. It's hard to love y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to love people. You preach to them every week, and then Wednesday night come, you ask them to show up, and then they don't show up. But then they get married, and then they want, to get, they want you to be there, and you kind of just like... I remember when I asked you to do me a favor and you didn't show up, so, you know, shoot, I, you know, hey, this is the seed that you sown. I'm just helping you reap what you sown. Pastor, I'm in the hospital. Oh, you in the hospital now, huh? Oh, so that's what it is. Yeah, you know, so lo loving, loving people is a, is, is a journey, but you can't grow if you don't love. It is easy to love those who celebrate you. You got to know that there will always be people that will critique you no matter how good you are. And God sometimes doesn't allow it, but he, he, God allows, but he uses it to show you how do you really feel about yourself? Because some of us, you, you good with that follow God. PD, I'm with you on that, follow God, yeah. But love God, 
Pastor, I'm with you. Love people. Some of you got people in the sanctuary you don't even like. You know how y'all do? Not y'all, the other church down the street, because y'all right. You see them coming through that door, you're like, all right, let me go, babe, let's go out the right door because they're coming out the right door. Right, because th this is, it's, it's hard for us to love. You ever wanted, okay, don't judge me, I, don't judge me. H have you ever just liked being mad? Like you knew it was, like you knew it's time. <laughs> you know it's time to make up and you're like, I don't, I don't want to do it. I, j I just kind of like being mad right now. I don't, I, I don't care. I don't care. I, I know, and you kind of like, oh, why, why am I mad? I don't know, but it just, I just, I just, I just gotta hold on to it. I just gotta, I just gotta hold on to it. What you holding on to? I don't know. It's just, you just mad. You mad at everything. Why you turn the TV up? It's too loud. It's only on level three. But you, when, when you're, when you, when you're, when you're, when you're not willing to love, and you look through the lens of offense, everything bothers you. It ain't even real. See how she walked by? She walked by thinking she all that. No, I did not. See how she was patting her head? She patting her head because she's saying things about me in her head. That's what she said. No, I'm patting because this thing is itching me. I am not, uh, 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 uh. I am looking not at you. So this is what I'm saying. When you're talking about your love walk, God, God strategically places you in situations to see, can you love me more than you love your own pride? Number three, follow God, love people. Number three is this, change your city. As a local church, what does God call you to do? God has not called you to change Jerusalem per se. He's, he's called you to change Nineveh. Like all of us have a responsibility to change our city, change our Nineveh. Where is your Nineveh? Maybe it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's Pine Hills. Maybe it's Windermere. Maybe it's, it's Poking Beans. Maybe it's, 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 it's Lake Mary. Maybe it's, it's Sanford. Maybe it's Altamont. How are you changing it? Like, don't talk about what you're doing here. Tell us how you're changing out there. Because out there needs the Jesus that you have. Not, not just in here. Out there needs to know like, yo, you know what? You're going to be somebody. Can I pray with you? Can I? This is the one thing that you can say about certain religions. They will sit out there on the corner in the hot sun, sweating bullets to tell you about a God in your AC car. You know why Christianity don't grow? Because we feel entitled. I don't owe to tell you nothing about God. That ain't my job. Let the preview TV preachers tell you about that. Let YouTube do it. I ain't telling you about God. But there are other religions that will stand out in the sun. Other religions that wear these robes in 98 degree weather with a bullhorn telling you about the version of God that they have while Christians drive in their car. You know, God asked me a question when I was walking through New Orleans. And sometimes I can get, kind of get real deep. And then sometimes I'm really, really shallow. Um, but when I was in New Orleans, I saw Elliot there too. So I'll just let you know, Elliot, stand up. You need prayer right now. So I was out there evangelizing. Come out the airport. I hear, here, Pastor D. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? Who? So when I was walking through New Orleans, one of the things that God really tugged on my heart is this how many people D, do you know that are dying that you've said nothing to I'm like oof there's a lot of people if, if, if I'm going to close with this if we believe hell is real if we believe it's real right like we believe hell is real how many of us care enough to tell people not to be there? Remember, love is more powerful than just words because if I love you, I want to see the best for you. So maybe I need to ask myself the question because I'm not going to ask you. Do I really love people or do I just like them? I'm not talking about telling them to come to your church. I'm just talking about telling them about God.
Like I, I marveled in New Orleans. It was like 90,000 degrees out there. It was hot. It was so hot, Satan left. That's how hot it was, right? <laughs> it was bad. I, I saw Satan. He said, yo, I'm out of here. It's too hot. Man. I'm out of here, right? No, but, but I, I saw people with their news pamphlets handing them out to people, trying to witness to them about their God. And I said, I don't see any Christians. I ain't saw one. Think about it. I didn't see one. I saw swingers. There was a lot of them too. Like, all y'all swing? Shoot, I could y'all, y'all ain't happily married. Y'all not even married. I ain't see one. Like we're we're good in the church about talking about the mess or celebrating our preachers. But we never celebrate our God. Okay, let, let's break it down. Even to, Elder John, let's break it down to even a smaller, more microcosmic level. When's the last time you prayed for one of your friends? No, no, not not like on your own time, but like said, like, yeah, I just called to pray with you. Or is that too deep? Is that too deep? Like, just think about it. Like, how, I, I have friends, and we talk about it. Like, when's the last time you're like, yo, let's just pray together. I know it's kind of weird. It's weird for me, too. I get it. But let's just do it so that we can be Christians and do this thing the right way. Like, like I'm, when's the last time you, I pr you pray for me all the time? Because every time I text him, he says, I've been praying for you. And I'm like, no, he said, I text Pastor now. He says, what do you say? Huh? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Say it again. Oh, yeah, he says, I prayed at your well. Every time I text him. So then I text back, I said, well, how long have you been praying? Right, so I guess when he gets the text, he's like, ooh, Lord, let him be well in Jesus' name. Pray that you're well, right? So, so here, here's the thing. But how, how, like, when's the last time you just called him and said, brother, let me just pray with you? Imagine how amazing Christianity would be if we were just excited about what we believe. Now, I know this, I've got four minutes and I'm done. Y'all going to judge me and probably join another church, but this is this thing. Let me see, I should say this because people chop it up and put it online. When people are excited about something, it's contagious. Out, my brother-in-law, he had a wedding, 10 years, I did the wedding and everything, and then they did this little after party, and like they were playing all these different types of songs that I didn't know, right? I grew up in the church. And I just saw people doing all these different dances. And in, I've never envied being a sinner. Hear what I say. I have never envied being a sinner. But that night, I was like, you know what? I, I felt kind of bad. I asked Mono, I'm like, hey, man, can you text me some of these songs so I can see the dances that these people? Because it's like every song that came on, everybody knew the dance to it. And I'm like... I left there so messed up. And I'm like, I need to go pray or something. I said, I can see why people club. This is fun. I like this stuff. Right? Because, you know, they had this, all these all, little boozy. I don't know who he is. Don't look him up. Don't Google him. I just was thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, I feel this. This, like, it just took over my soul or something. I don't know what happened. Started asking my wife, where can we get in free before 10 and nobody knows? Right? You know, that type of stuff. That's just a... Because you saw people excited about the music and the words. And, and I'm thinking like, when can we get so excited about having a God that we're just in love with, that we just appreciate and we value and we just esteem and we just reverence? We should have the same joy. That joy should be so contagious that you're sitting up there talking about, hey, man, how so, so watch me whip. How you whip? Show me how you whip. Yeah, right. You, you just, that joy should be so contagious. Let's let's make Christianity popular again by following God 
Because if you follow God, if you love people and change your city, God's providence will always be with you. God will take care of what you need to be taken care of. Because he's proud. All right. I'm closing with this last story. It's no music, so then I can finish. I got, I'm still on time. God knows what you need, and he'll save you from what you need. When you, when you know God, when you follow God, love people, change your city, God will position you in places to do that. He'll give you the protective care. So I went, to, I went to meet this car dealer guy, and he was a member of the church, which is crazy. And so I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to work with you, and uh, we're going to work. So we get outside, and he starts sharing his story. He says, I make six figures a year now, Pastor. And you no, know, the first thought I thought was, do you tithe? That's what I thought. That wasn't, oh, wow. It was like, do you tithe? And then I came back in the spirit, and I said, wow, God is amazing. So what happened to him was he, he got divorced. And in the process of his divorce, allegedly, his wife told him, you're nothing, and you'll never be nothing. He lost his business and all this stuff, filed bankruptcy, was just in a bad situation. He decided to take a gun and kill himself. And he said, I took the gun out, Pastor. I put it at my head and my phone rang. It was a FaceTime of my daughter's. He said, my daughter got sick at school. Out of nowhere, started throwing up. And they called her mom. She didn't answer. But I answered. And I saw my daughter crying, and I said, baby, what's wrong? She said, I'm sick, and I want daddy to come get me. He said, a FaceTime saved my life. When you, when you follow God, I said, so I asked him, I said, like, what do you think? He says, I had a mom that's always praying for me. And he said, right, he said, Pastor, I was right about to pull the trigger. He said, I had already written out a note to my girls. What I'm telling you is, you never know what people are going through that sit beside you. And it may be your love that changes their life. Bow your heads, let's pray. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you. It is what we need to become who you said we are. Help us to follow you. Help us to love you. Help us to change our city. Nineveh is not a good place. It's not a fun place to change, and they're not good people. But we're still required to change. God, help me to do what I don't want to do because I need to do it. Help me to be open. Help me to be open. God, you challenge my love walk because you know that I, there's great things you have for me. And, and if I don't love, then it's going, to, it's going to stop those things. We all need the help. We all, we all need it. Help us to be passionate about the things you're passionate about. Help us to love the things that you love. Help us to hate the things that you hate. Help us to love you with our heart and all of our soul. Help us to enjoy the providence. God, you protected us from a lot of things. You've organized a lot of things in our favor. You've protected us from storms. You've protected us from ourselves. And so, God, your providence is what we pray over our children. God, let your providence. You love our kids more than we love them. God, every day we go to work. God, let your providence. God, I don't know what today brings, but let your providence. God, you're, I am under your providence. Let, let me rest underneath your providence. Let me not worry, God, because I'm under your providence. Let me, not, let me not bother you about these things. Let me tell my mind, mind, I'm under the providence of God. I'm, under, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to look over my shoulder every second of the day. I'm, I'm going to live under the providence of God. I'm going to live underneath the providence of God. God, I am under your spiritual care. You care for me. You know what I need before I even need it. You've arranged things. You, you will make children fall sick to FaceTime me so that I don't harm myself. Let, let me, Lord, send things my way that will stop me from destructing my death. God, God, be the providential, caring God that you are. 
So, Lord, we lift up marriages. We lift up singles. We lift up children to you. We give them over to your providential care. We say, Lord, there you joined it together. We bring it back to you. You gave me this child. We send it back to you. Lord, I thank you. And so, and Father, even now, I pray for Sabine, who's in the hospital. I pray your providential care over her life. I pray that this young woman will recover every step of that she's lost. I pray, Lord, that you'll encourage. I pray you'll send ministering angels now. Restore her speech in the name of Jesus. Bring her back to full health in the name of Jesus. I pray by your spirit that we would follow God. No matter who leaves you, I'm still following. No matter who says I'm done with you, I'm still following. No matter who says I quit God, I'm still following. I was the love. Let's change our city. It's in Jesus' name we pray. If you receive that, come on, clap your hands. You receive it. Hallelujah. Listen, y'all, let's, let's, let's love God. Let's follow God this morning. Let's honor God you know, in following him. How, how do we change our city? By honoring God and following him, doing what he says, honoring him with 10% of what we have. Honestly, I ain't, I ain't been here in a month. Normally, I tithe. I've, I've been holding them because I ain't been here. But I want to follow God. Like beyond anything, I want to follow God. And if you follow God, God will take care of everything that you need. Tithing puts you under the providential care of God. It is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It is to say to God every day and every week that I get paid, I do not want my money to become my Lord because it be can become it. And it does it quickly. Offering y'all, let's do 30 if you can, 35 if you can, 50 if you can. We're behind, of course, in the summertime. But let's catch up. Let's catch up. Let's catch up with a providential trust that God you're in control let's trust that God you're in control and trust your providential care that God when I leave when this money leaves my hand it's not leaving my life this is my tithe I earned it I worked for it entitlement says God don't deserve 10 percent that's too much no entitlement will rob you of the providential care of God now, I'm going to trust you. I'm, I'm going to believe that you're, you're a God that, that will not lie according to what he said. Like if I put seed in the ground, you told me you're going to take care of my seed. So I'm going to trust that that's going to happen. I can never outgive you. I can never outgive you. God, I'm trusting you to make me have big sales. Well, can God trust you with the return on the sale? Can God trust you with the bonus to return it back to him? God will never ask you for all your money. But he will ask you for some of it. And you got to be willing to trust him with it. God can save you from bad decisions. I've seen him do it. It's just not for a pastor, it's for people who trust them and submit underneath the umbrella of the providence of God. That doesn't mean it won't rain. That doesn't mean you won't get wet sometimes. That doesn't mean life won't happen. It just simply means God will give you an outcome that's different than everybody else. We may be going through the same thing, but our outcomes are different. Christians are not exempt because, oh, I'm under providential care. That means I don't have no problems. I don't have no issues. No, we all will have problems, every one of us. But our outcomes are different. And we don't hope like, we don't, we don't mourn like those who have no hope. We have hope. And if you lose your hope, you've lost everything. So even if you're that father that wants to give up on life, you have life worth living. Don't make a permanent decision in a temporary situation. Don't let depression rob you of all the good things God has done for you. It's a lot of good things he's done. Father, thank you for these gifts. They're gifts. They're seeds put in the ground. 
collectively, corporately, we give them today as a sign of our act of obedience to follow God. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll bless us for doing so. Help us to give with a joyful heart and to love you, follow you, and love people and change our city. Help us to change our circle of influence so that we can hear well done that good and faithful servant. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I should you may receive this time. Don't forget Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Bishop C.E. Glover, I trust that you'll make every valid and viable attempt to be here this Wednesday. who can help some of you brothers would you go see Pastor Ron help us give out some of the extra supplies that we have he's going to be in the back directly I'm going to excuse a few brothers to help them give out some backpacks some additional ones if you can head out now before I dismiss us thank you for helping thank you so much those of you that can do that help Pastor Ron give out some of those backpacks all right thank you all right, Father, I thank you for what's been said and done. We're leaving this place not to leave your presence. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. and everyone wants to know that they are valuable, they're worth something. And that's what we do at the Kingdom Church. TKC makes you feel love from the minute you walk in the door. And being in that church, that's how we all see each other. I love being part of a church that cares about individuals and that will go above and beyond to help individuals in need. TKC's done a phenomenal job at helping me develop myself, my mind, and my faith. That's what church is all about. No one and everyone wants to know that they are valuable, they are worth something, and that's what we do at the Kingdom Church. TKC makes you feel love from the minute you walk in the door. And being in that church, that's how we all see each other. I love being part of a church that cares about individuals and that would go above and